major markets or niches of children's nonfiction. Some of these, well, most of these are not all you will know, but I think it's just, um, for those that are new to it, I think it's important to define just the general categories of children's nonfiction. So you have trade, which we talked about before, the ones, if you like, that you see in all the bookstores, school and library, and educational, which are, um, I wouldn't say limited, but obviously big in schools and educational institutions, online and digital, another big area, quite separate, not necessarily uh, distinct from, but uh, a separate group of connections and contacts for you to follow up. And obviously there's now self-publishing and self-publishing I think is, is great for non-fiction and again I'll touch on that a little bit more later on. Each one of these has its own, as I've said here, sort of target audience and I'll talk more about that and I'll show you some examples of all of these major markets or niches and talk a little bit more about each one. Major sources of work uh, again, I've listed many of these uh, individual companies on the handouts, but these are the main places that you might look to find work or to pitch yourself to them. And again, I'll talk about the difference of pitching proposals and if you like pitching yourselves uh, as individuals, as individual writers, and you, there's a different approach to approaching each one of these, these sources. This you might find um, a little bit different. Uh, I hope you will. These are some of the less obvious opportunities that may be offered to you or that you can find. There are many, many organizations out there who are not mainstream trade publishers, but nonetheless produce significant amounts of, significant amounts of children's nonfiction work. Many of this is local, parochial publishing, if you like, uh, local newspapers, tourist information, but local museums. And you as an author might encourage your local museum or local organizations to produce educational materials for children. And as you become more confident and knowledgeable about how the children's nonfiction market works, you can yourself become, if you like, a book packager or a publisher. Uh, and work with these organizations to produce things for them. So there's many, many different opportunities, less obvious ones, as I say, but, but important. <clears throat> Blogs too, obviously, um, how you monetize those is, is being discovered all the time, but they are great opportunities and outlets for your work and connections with your writers and children, of course. Um, on that, I have to say, in all of this discussion and, and many of the conversations, I'm afraid that children often don't get mentioned. Um, we're talking about and to publishers all the time. Publishers are the ones who hopefully have their fingers on the pulse. They should know what children are looking for and what parents are asking for. You sometimes have to help them uh, and, and don't be shy of telling publishers what they need to know or should know. Um, you often have your fingers on the pulse more than they do. So, and certainly when you're working, thinking up ideas, pitching ideas, always have your child reader in mind and don't lose sight of, of where we all should be going. This is a, a list of the major categories of children's nonfiction publishing. Some of the terms I've used here overlap with one another. Some of them uh, you may be familiar with, others not so much. Uh, other publishers, editors may come up with a slightly different list, but I think this is a pretty extensive list and I will try and show you examples of most of these to give you a clearer idea of, of what is out there and what you might aim for. And again, I think it's very important when you're thinking of ideas or wanting to pitch yourself forward that you focus on one or more of these individual groups and try and succeed in those first before going perhaps onto something else. Alternatively, you might just try one of these as an experiment. You might, of course, have to put in more effort to do that, but it's always worth stretching your abilities and categories that you work for. It just gives you far more scope. 
I, as I say, I take you through now examples of each of the categories. Of 